Now we are going to discuss about an important aspect of the space settlement contest that is dimensional analysis dimensions of the space colony or a space hotel whatever it is. So the dimensions of a space colony or the dimensional analysis of a space settlement project depends upon primarily on the general requirement of the people. A human being is the main person who will live inside the space colony. So based on his requirements, we will have our dimensions. So the general requirements of the humans inside the space colony are categorized into two parts. One is inputs, second one is outputs. Here when it comes to inputs, the major requirement of the life the major requirement of the life is gravitation so the gravitation which supports the human life which enables the human life which made humans survival is 1g so it should be same as an earth so the gravity required for a human being inside the space colony is 1g either we took a space colony with a, a shape of torus or a shape of sphere or a shape of cylinder whatever the shape we chosen that chosen shape should be able to provide or should be able to generate 1g gravitation 1g is approximately equal to 9.8 meter per second square so that should be the minimum gravity required for the survival of human civilization on earth we have that gravity naturally because of the earth's mass and radius but when it comes to the space colony we have to generate this gravitation artificially and this gravity generation will depends upon the shape and the structure of our space colony will depends upon the shape and the structure of our space colony after gravitation the second important uh, requirement of the humans is food so food is a general thing which was required by the humans for their safe living and to secure their lives around the world people are based on food people are living and the life of the people are based on food only in general a healthy human being on earth could consume 3.1 kgs of food per day either the breakfast or the snacks or the lunch or the supper whatever they are taking hold together all together as a whole they will consume 3.1 kgs of food per day okay and then the next important thing is water so water is a essential life support and life requirement in the space colony on earth we are getting water very naturally because of the bore wells or because of the rivers or because of the rains, continuous rains. So we can have a rain water harvesting system to get the drinking water or we can make a bore well with a depth of 200, 300 or 1000 feet to get the pure drinking water or we can have the rivers namely Krishna, Godavari, Tungabhadra, Narmada, Kaveri, Ganga, Yamuna, Brahmaputra etc and from these rivers also we are getting the drinking water but when it comes to the space colony there won't be any bore wells there won't be any rivers and there won't be any possibility of the rains also 
so we have to provide the water and water will be used in different ways by the humans not only for drinking we require water for bathing water for cleaning the utensils water for cleaning the or washing the cloths am i correct or not so humans not only use water for drinking they will use the water for bathing morning and evening they use the water for cleaning the utensils morning afternoon and evening and they require water for washing the cloths also for all these purposes on an average per day per one person we require 20 liters of water now you can check children on earth how much water we are wasting you can only imagine the general usage of water is should be in between 20 liters only but we are consuming more than that on earth that was the reason why today we are in a situation of purchasing the water in the market okay so how much water we require 20 liters this 20 liters only we have to use for our bathing our drinking and cleaning and washing purposes apart from the water the next important aspect is oxygen a healthy person on earth per day consumes an oxygen of 4.4 kg so a healthy human being 24 hours in a day will inhale 4.4 kg of oxygen and exhales the output is carbon dioxide and they will exhale a carbon dioxide of 4.8 kg you may get it out we are inhaling 4.4 how we are exhaling it 4.8 it is because of the biological things in the human body okay and the next important aspect is area so for a person to live happily for one person to live happily the minimum area required is 60 meter square it is an ideal thing so you can allot 40 meter square or 50 meter square or 70 meter square or 80 meter square if your space colony is big enough you can allot 80 100 150 meter square area also but as a minimum a common human being required 60 meter square area to live happily so the same area requirement should be adapted to our space colony also space hotel also so while distributing the area inside our space colony or inside our space hotel we have to keep in mind that a healthy human being require 60 meter square area for healthy living okay and after that the shielding so what it is shielding is an important thing which is protecting us from the outer radiation in the previous class we discussed about the importance of the solar radiation or cosmic radiation so that radiation is a good thing if we are utilizing it in a proper way and the same radiation may cause the hazardous effect on the human health if we are directly open for the radiation so to do not open the human beings in space colony to the radiation directly what we can use we can use the shielding so shielding is something we are making around us in the form of a wall or something with different layers of carbon nanotubes and fibers and uh, regolith etc etc materials to protect ourselves from the harmful radiation which is uh, coming from the sun or from the outer space so this shielding generally required 10 meters to 18 meters so it is an average you can keep 10 meters radiation shielding or you can keep 12 meters radiation shielding 15 meters radiation shielding 18 meters radiation shielding and that shielding is required for the safety and security of humans inside the space colony and apart from that pressure so pressure is force acting per unit area in a unidirectional way and this pressure is very very important for the human beings because it depends upon the outer atmospheric pressure our inner 
blood pressure will be decided and this blood pressure is a uh, common thing for the safety and security of human beings so outside pressure if we are making in a proper way then it will support the human life in a better way so the outside uh, atmospheric pressure inside the space colony should be in between 0.5 atmosphere to 1 atmosphere 0.5 atmosphere to 1 atmosphere and the normal temperatures range in which the human can happily live or human can safely live is 20 degrees celsius to 40 degrees celsius so for our understanding i took uh, 22 degrees celsius to 40 degrees celsius is the average limit of the uh, temperatures so these are the input requirements for any space colony either you can keep one person in your space colony 10 persons in your space colony, 100 persons in your space colony, 1000 or 10,000 or 1 million, whatever the population density, whatever the population you choose. In that population, every person should require these inputs. So it is our prime responsibility to provide the inputs based on the calculations. For example, if 100 people you are accommodating, so you can make a food requirement is 100 into 3.1 kg per day. Am I correct or not? 100 into 3.1 kg per day. The oxygen requirement 100 into 4.4 kg per day. Water requirement 100 into 20 liters per day. Like that, that per day can be converted into per week. Per week can be converted into per month. Per month can be converted into per annum. So based on that, you can think about the provision of those requirements provision of those requirements okay and uh, the outputs which are came out of these inputs that means after eating a food of 3.1 kg per day the human waste will be came outside that human waste is 0.8 kg per day normally and after inhaling 4.4 kg of oxygen, the humans will exhale 4.8 kg of carbon dioxide. And after drinking 5 to 6 liters of water per day, the humans will uh, give out uh, in the urine form or sweat form total 7.5 kg of water. Okay. So, based on these inputs and the outputs, we would have our regenerative life supporting system calculations in our space colony understood